Peekaboo, look what we've got here. Cue that intro. Hello and welcome back to On The Workbench. Today we're taking a look at the brand new late 2021 edition of the Cobalt 24 volt max lineups newest edition, the cordless fogger, Mr. Mosquito killer kit, if you will. Uh, this is a brand new product from Cobalt. Other brands have had items similar to this. Uh, this just rolled out not that long ago. And so we're gonna take a quick look at this product here and show you what you get in the box. Uh, any other secrets that are in here and what else you might be able to do with this. So first things first, we look at Cobalt tools. We always got to look at and see what's on top of the box. If there's any other cues on what's coming out. So let's take a look at the matrix on top here. And a couple of things here that stand out to me. We've got the fogger right up here. That's this tool. We've got the brand new spotlight here. We also have the new bandsaw right there. Obviously the mower right there. And interestingly enough, we still have the old flashlight right there, which I was suspicious was going to be replaced by this light. Like for example, there's an old spotlight that this replaced that's no longer in these tool matrix, as well as a new, uh, the newer version of the leaf blower that's also been replaced. We still see the misting fan and the regular fan in the matrix, but there's nothing else here at this point we're not aware of yet. Uh, other than obviously the bandsaw that's not yet available and this flashlight that has just started rolling out as well. And we have the mower as well on this grid. So it's great to see this growing. And we see here the new comment here says 50 plus tools and more to come. Always exciting. So now a couple of performance specs on the back. And well, quite frankly, this is underwhelming. Just max performance, max coverage, max convenience and low weight. I don't really know what that means, so let's just go ahead and open the box and see what we get. So open the box, we got some foam. This comes with a charger and a battery. I don't really need any more of these chargers, but I guess that's great for someone that's new. Toss out the foam. We get a strap. This feels like the same chintzy strap that comes with the 24 volt sprayer. Two amp hour battery out of the box, two bars of charge, and that's it. Oh, I missed it. We've got our manuals here for the charger and the tool. Take the tool out of the box here. You can see we got a nice little tag on this. If this was placed on display in the store, suggesting other products that go with it that are the part of the 50 plus tools that go with this. And so the obvious use for this tool is going to be mosquito control in your backyard, as you can mix a couple of pesticides with this uh, to be able to spray into bushes or shrubs to help to rid your backyard of pests. And thereby, you could, you know, not have to call some of these commercial companies that want to basically do the same thing. So on here, at the very top here, we've got our grip. Turn it on. We also have a trigger at the bottom, but you can't pull this trigger unless you push forward the safety. And that goes on. However, it does not lock or stay on. So you have to manually hold that trigger down. It's not that bad to get it to come on. Nice little sticker here that shows you a one, two step instruction. We've got a flow control knob here from zero to max flow. We've got a hook in the front and a hook in the rear here for our over the shoulder strap. On the back, we've got basically what looks like a little folding up visor and our battery is going to go in there. We'll check, look, we'll look at that a little bit more in a second. And at the very front of the tool, we've got a adjustable spray pattern here that we can dial this in or out to change our spray pattern. And then finally, we've got a fill connection here for our tank over here. So one thing here with this, this does not have a detachable tank. So to fill this, you have to actually fill this with the tool connected to it. Obviously make sure it is powered off when you're filling it. This is rated for 1.5 gallons as what's marked there. Uh, so what the first thing I noticed about this here, there's a nice wide opening in which you can fill it. 
It's not as small or as tight as on the sprayer. You, you can easily fit a garden hose in there, but my one of my concerns is going to be the fact that uh, with a tank that's this shallow, if you have a hose that's on too high pressure, the odds of you getting uh, some spray back at you, I think it's going to be pretty high. So make sure you get that pressure turned down so you don't end up overfilling this, especially when you mix it with a spray compound. Uh, and there is a nice little rubber O-ring gasket in there to seal this up. And so with that spot in the back, we can go ahead and put in our two amp hour battery. And there is extra room there for the larger ultimate output battery in the four or the eight amp hour size. Eight amp, the eight amp hour size is obviously not yet available. And so there's how it sounds right quick. I wouldn't recommend running it empty for too long, but the idea you can pick this up and then spray down your shrubs. So now I'm gonna go fill this with some basic water and we'll see how this looks uh, when we operate it. All right, so now we're outside in the backyard to give this a little test. I've got the tool filled up. And just to start, I've got the end tip here. If I have this, let's just go ahead and start this test just by taking this all the way out and removed. And then we'll turn this all the way up and you'll be able to see the effect of that. And you can see it blew one of the parts out from the spinning fan. With the part recovered, you can see there's a little nozzle that it comes out and then these little blades are able to spin to help to atomize the mist. If you look back here, you can see what that barrel looks like. We'll put this part in like that. That allows it to spin. And then we'll take this nozzle, and if we tighten this all the way down, then there'll be no, no spray that comes out, but air only. So that's tightened all the way down. And there was maybe just a little bit of remaining moisture at the end of the nozzle. But that sweet spot's going to be somewhere in between. So just to give it a few twists there. And then now when I go. And that's at max. I can obviously dial this back down. Hopefully you can see the stream there coming out. A couple other things here, just looking at the tool. If you tilt this back, So when using this tool, one of the things that comes to mind when you first start up is to pay attention to the end of the nozzle here, that it's not going to drip out over your clothing, your boots, or whatever else you're wearing. And obviously with something like this, make sure you're wearing the proper personal protective view of... Obviously with a tool like this, make sure you're wearing... So obviously with a tool like this, make sure you're wearing the proper personal protective equipment to protect your hands, your eyes, and your nose. Especially when you're using chemical sprays with this, that it's going to atomize that you're not going to incidentally breathe in any of those chemicals or have it get into your eyes. That's not very good for your health. You get one pair of eyes in your life, so treat them really well. So now when I go to start it up, it blows out. And that works fine when the nozzle's pointed up. If I point the nozzle down like this to start, And so from what I can see here, one of the things that looks like is going to be really important with this is if you do need to spray low shrubs, 
make sure you start and end your spray stroke uh, with the tool pointed up, or at least slightly up, and obviously away from you and other people and other animals. And then go ahead and point it down at the low shrub, spray it, and then point it back up, and then release it. So there's going to be a little bit of a technique for how to use this tool correctly that you're not just dripping excessive spray everywhere, and you're able to use the correct amount of spray. So that's your look at this. Let's go and talk a little more about this back on the workbench. All right, so now you can see we've got the tool here all set up here with the shoulder strap on. And now let's talk with a few final wrap up points with this. Uh, first and foremost, the shoulder strap is just really super cheap and flimsy. If you're gonna use a shoulder strap, I'd recommend getting a replacement. I've seen some nice ones from Husky. And otherwise, this will obviously do the trick, but this is not gonna be the most comfortable um, and obviously, if that's important to you, uh, go and spend a few extra bucks to get a better shoulder strap. If you're not going to use a shoulder strap, then say thank you very much and then throw it away. But it's still great to give you the option with the connection points that we can use that. Uh, a couple other uh, points with this. I pointed out earlier about how that spray can just kind of drip out of the front when you're using it. So that's important to be careful about turning the tool around. Also, make sure you have this tank sealed and that closed up there that doesn't throw, uh, spill back out at you. The other little detail back here in the tank is there's gonna be a pickup nozzle in here. And it'd be nice if there was a way you can kind of shake it around that when it gets towards the end, I think there's gonna be a little bit of shaking and moving to try to get the last of that chemical spray out uh, before you put it away. The other little piece with this, especially because it's winter now, uh, let's just be fair that you don't wanna leave chemicals in here uh, to freeze over the winter and then destroy the tool. And if you've got more sticky substances like some of these chemicals can be, you may want to be able to flush, it, flush this out with some water. And so it's great the fact that we can take apart the business end of the tool, like I showed you outside earlier, that we can wash that down and scrub it. And always make sure you wash your hands after you're done using a tool like this and that you're wearing your proper personal protective equipment with it. So quick to wrap up here. So for $119, or I think this tool is worth it, uh, maybe if you think you've got mosquito control issues in your yard, this might be the ticket for that. Um, if you don't have uh, issues with that, perhaps if you're a fruit farmer, which I'm not, I'd be curious if you had a cherry tree and you're concerned about a late spring freeze, spraying this down with the mister to help to preserve the cherry crop might be another use for this tool. That's not my industry or anything I've got experience with, but something that I think seems like that might be a good uh, alternative use for this. And the other final thought I've got on this, at $119, uh, out the door on launch and with a combo kit only option. To me, I would like to have the option to be able to buy this as a tool only. And I wish more of the in-store options came as tool only rather than the reverse. I understand they're trying to get people into the lineup and starting them off with a charger uh, and a battery is great to get you into the lineup, but almost all the outdoor power equipment tools come with a battery and a charger and I think most people that are into the Cobalt tool lineup, we've got a bucket full of these somewhere that we just don't need. And other people in the Cobalt tool market figure out the same thing, that these just accumulate just as fast as the batteries, which is my other point, is that with this Cobalt lineup, the other great part is the value price of the batteries, which in other lines is one of the more expensive parts of the tool. And so with that, that's our look at the Cobalt 24 volt chemical fogger. If you have any questions or comments, put it down in the description below. If you like videos like this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day. Bye.